Remember when media wanted you to revolve around their schedule? It told you where, how, when. Well, something happened along the way. We changed. Words like on demand, streaming, and interactive all became part of the new media landscape. Today's media isn't about us. It's about you. When you want it, how you want it, where you want it. So we figured it was time to carve out our own space. A space to connect with you. Giving you the shows and content you want from the hosts you love and love to hate. Laughs? Sure. Insight? Of course. Breaking news when it happens and going along on the stories that matter. Giving you something new. This is media for the new world. Your world. A platform for an ever busy, ever mobile, ever evolving audience like you. This is about something new. Something you've always wanted. Something Iowa has needed. And now it has. This is Iowa Everywhere. All right, guys. Week one. We're here. It's funny. Ever It was the hour that I signed off of KXNO and I had people texting me or tweeting at me. Where are the locks of the week going to be? We got them right here. All right. We're going to start things off with a general lesson. Don't go crazy in week one. We don't know anything about these teams. Don't be an idiot. Nobody knows for sure. There's like there's some of these teams with like 40 newcomers this year. Okay. We don't have an idea. I got a pretty good idea on three of them though. And they are going to be absolute. These are locks. Okay. We call it locks for a reason. These are locks. We're going to go 3-0 and with these, and we're going to start things off with Clemson, Georgia Tech. And that is coming up on, I think that is the uh, Monday night game. That's the Labor Day game. Here's the thing to point out here. Two things. One, Georgia Tech could be historically bad this year. They've been bad for a while. Could be historically bad this year. Clemson, here's why I like Clemson. Had all offseason to kind of sulk in their disappointment that was last year right dj ungulele the quarterback right people doubting them a very unclemson like offseason they come into this at 21 and a half point favorite over lowly georgia tech here's the thing it's not even at georgia tech it's in the dome there it's not even at georgia tech there might be more clemson fans than georgia tech fans here national television i don't know like i feel like they might cover this 21 and a half in the first half like this just this feels to me like Clemson's got something to prove right like you just add it all up how bad Georgia Tech is lock it up and I get to this one early too I would get to this one early because this could be nearing 24 by kickoff I think lock it up Clemson minus 21 and a half Monday night against Georgia Tech all right moving on Friday night. Stick to what you know a little bit. Uh, don't know a ton about this team. I know what I do know one thing, and that's that Colorado sucks. Colorado picked to be the last place team in the Pac-12, and the Pac-12 is, is is really really bad, right? Colorado's supposed to be the worst team in the league. I'm looking at the other end now. Here's my motivation to pick TCU. Minus 13 and a half. Again, get on it early. This will go over 14 before kickoff. TCU, new coach. Gary Patterson's out. Sonny Dykes is in. Look at Sonny Dykes' teams when he coached at SMU. Always started hot. I think he has high motivation to get a fast start here. Right? He's he's trying to get out of Gary Patterson's shadow. The TCU is one of the most disturbing teams to me, too, going into... Again, like, this is why, like, you got to be a little bit careful here. But I think I have all the motivation. Sonny Dykes needs to get off to a fast start to win over this fan base, to get everybody fired up. He's got a veteran quarterback. And they're a team who, it feels like some people are either picking them to, like, be a dark horse to play for a big 12 championship or they think they're just going to totally suck i think the lazy people have them totally suck still good players there sunny dykes gets this thing going in a hurry i think that the line is actually this low because you know it's it is a true road game it is a night game 
you are heading west, but I think Colorado is like really, really bad. Okay, really, really bad. I like TCU, a surprising September team. I'll call it right now. TCU surprises a lot of people in September when we move into October and you're like, hey, team has a shot to be a disruptor in the Big 12 this year. TCU minus 13 and a half. Lock them up against Colorado on Friday night. Be a lot of people betting on that game because of the time. Something I've never done on the locks, but you know what? What the hell? We're going to do a six-point teaser, okay? A two-team, six-point teaser with the two quote-unquote games of the week in college football. I uh, was talking on our Thursday night um, Nebraska Furniture Mart show with Tim and Brent about, well, why are these point spreads so high for these battles of ranked teams? Well, it's because really smart people are setting those point spreads, right? Could there be an upset? Sure. Will there be? I don't think so. Uh, and I, but I wanted to buy a little bit. So I, a six-point teaser gets me down to minus 120 in DraftKings. So I'm paying a little bit more juice here. But you get Ohio State down to minus 11 versus Notre Dame. I, I think Notre Dame, along with Oklahoma, two most overrated teams in the country. Notre Dame comes in ranked number five, yet their win total is at eight and a half. Something doesn't add up. Who do you trust more, the pollsters or Vegas? I trust Vegas. Pollsters are idiots. So I'm rolling with Notre I, I have Ohio State winning the national championship this year. Jim Knowles coming over at defensive coordinator. I think you have the best offense in college football with Ryan Day, and now you're going to have a greatly improved defense with Jim Knowles. Big 12 fans, you know him from Oklahoma State the last few years. So I'm really high on Ohio State. I think Notre Dame, yeah, I'll play with them for a while, but I, I I really like them to cover the 11. Georgia, Oregon. Well, the big storyline here is Dan Lanning playing against Georgia, former team. Look a little closer. He didn't bring a single staff member from Georgia with him to Oregon. So this is really, while they've recruited okay, got some good players at Oregon. He's got to build this thing up. This is his first game going into SEC country. Georgia's just going to have them outclassed across the field. Again, I don't know if I, I probably wouldn't bet anything at 17. You get it down to 11. I don't think either one of these two marquee games this weekend are going to be all that close. I really don't. So I like this six-point teaser. You take it down. We're going to tease them both. Six points apiece. Gets us to minus 11 for each. Yeah, I'd like it at minus 10, but, you, you know, it is what it is. Lock it up. Six-point, two-team teaser. And we're going to take Georgia and Ohio State, the favorites, to beat Oregon and Notre Dame. And it's not going to be that entertaining of a first weekend in college football. All right. With that, these the, the what I'm about to do here, these are not locks. But I did want to go over these, some win totals for you guys that I just think are really intriguing. Really, we stick to what we know when it comes to win totals. I have Iowa State over six and a half, mainly because it's. A, I think that the schedule is very favorable for Iowa State. If you look at their, you know, you're going to Kansas, so that's good. You always want to go to Kansas. I don't need to waste a conference home game on Kansas, albeit I think that the Jayhawks are going to be better this year. But I like Iowa State's non-conference schedule better. Right with SEMO and Ohio, all but guarantees you to go at least two and one in the non conference. And then you have very favorable games at home. I think Iowa State's kind of at the point right now where it's a floor six and six type program under Matt Campbell. I just got to get one if that's the case to hit the over six and a half. I bet Kansas State. Now you're going to need to shop this one around. So I have it at six and a half. Now you're going to have to pay a lot of juice if you're going to find Kansas State at six and a half. Okay. But I took it at minus 150 over the weekend when I watched Nebraska play with Casey Thompson. Adrian Martinez has been a big question mark all summer long for Kansas State. How will he do there? I think if you look at a Big 12 right now, like who's the best team? Is it Baylor? Is it Oklahoma? Is it Oklahoma State? Is it Texas? There's so many question marks in this league. So I'm looking at this as a year where these middle – of the pack teams, your Kansas States and your Iowa States right now can kind of rise a little bit. 
this was a traditional year where you had two or three behemoths, I don't think I would pick these overs. But I think it's going to be a year where everybody's kind of cannibalizing one another. And Kansas State, really good up front, both sides of the ball, elite running back. I think a good quarterback who will benefit from not being at Nebraska with Scott Frost. I like Colin Klein, young coordinator, quarterback guy. Martinez is going to have plenty of room to run the football. Deuce Vaughn beside him. And I don't think they're going to ask him to do nearly as much as with his arm as he had to do at Nebraska. So I'm going to go over Kansas State again. You're going to find that higher. But if you do shop around, you can find it at 6.5. You're just going to have to pay the juice. I'd rather pay the juice than go up to 7. I'm going Oklahoma under 9.5 for my third pick. Listen, I mean, um, look at all the guys that they that they lost. Brent Venables is no doubt going to have them playing better defense than they have. But can they still be as a lead on offense? I don't know. Jeff Lebby, nice coordinator. Dylan Gabriel, nice quarterback. But they've been downright elite on offense. They're not going to be elite in my mind. If I have this read right, they're not going to be. How much better can they be on defense? I just have them under 9.5. I mean, you're telling me Oklahoma 9-3, I'll, I'll sign up for that. That's where I have them. I, I still think that they could lose to Nebraska in a couple weeks, and if they do that, it's all but a lock that they will, will hit that under. The last one for me is really um, interesting, and it's Houston at 9. I'm going to take the over. Right, listen, if you look at their schedule, I'm just going to read their Houston schedule with you. Super quick. And it, it's it's really, really favorable for Houston this year. So they have they really do have two tough road games to start. At UTSA in the Alamo Dome, and they're at Texas Tech. Okay, so those are both games that they could lose. They're probably going to be favored in both. Then they get Kansas. All right? Beat Kansas. Let's say worst case scenario, they're two and one there. Rice, Tulane. You got to go to Memphis. That's tough. At Navy, South Florida, at SMU, Temple, East Carolina, Tulsa. No Central Florida, no Cincinnati from the American. It's about as good of a schedule as you can get in the American. And you got Dana Holgerson. Things are going up. They have a schedule capable, you know, with the UTSA and Texas Tech games. They could be a dark horse to make the playoff if they run the table here. And I think it's very, very possible. So nine. So all I got to do is get the nine and I push. Ten and two is a winner. I like Houston. I I think that of all these, that's probably my favorite. Houston over nine. That is my favorite win-loss team total as we head into the season. So there's four. Don't tie up too much of your money in these, but that's I like to do it. I think it's fun. And then you got teams that you can sit around and root for and whatnot throughout the year. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening on Iowa Everywhere. Thanks to Matt Van Winkle for producing the Locks segment. We will be back next week. We'll have a little better idea of all these teams. Don't go crazy in week one. It will not end well for you, I promise. Thanks for watching. Have a great weekend watching college football.